good, good morning to you. And if you've just joined us, welcome to the Tony Emerson Breakfast Show. This is Piccadilly on 261 and 97 in Super Stereo. Today is weather word looking good. It's sunshine all the way and a temperature high of 64 degrees. Friday morning with John Lyons. Hi, Trevor. Morning, Lucy. It's an art form, isn't it? <laughs> you reckon? Well, there's a Romanian artist who does all his pictures in gingerbread. No way. I promise you. <laughs> That's clever. Nobody buys your paintings, you can always eat them. Right. Langton's not with us today. No? Good morning. Good morning. Morning, Norton. Morning. Where's Langton? Anniversary blues. Yeah? yeah? Five years ago this week, he chopped his mother to pieces. <laughs> <laughs> so he did. Here are the paints I promised you. What do you reckon? Yeah. I'm here to tell you. Here's the book I promised you. Mm. Cheers. Well, physician, heal thyself. Redundant. Yeah? Taylor's in the prison hospital with appendicitis. Tulliver's been allowed out for his old man's funeral. Langton's gone walkabout inside his own head. And Norton's a pain in the neck. <laughs> you know, one day you're going to laugh about all this. 11.30 tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Last night I had what I can only describe as a vision. I could see you clearly, almost too clearly. Your hair, eyes, nose, mouth, teeth, chin, throat, etc. Especially your etc. <laughs> that is not original. <laughs> My etc. is not original. I am not saying that. <laughs> then what are you saying? I am saying that this small joke was written in a small poem many years ago. <laughs> Go on, educate me. The poem was written by an American. His name was E. E. Cummings. And rightly so. <laughs> he wrote poems with no capital letters and practically no punctuation. I'll have to tell all my friends about you. Go to bed with Kurt Tallis, I'll say. You not only get laid, but you get A-level English as well. <laughs> <laughs> I do not approve of people stealing other people's ideas. Well, what do you expect? I mean, Spider Scott started off life as a fully paid up thief. to play chess. CIA. They send recruiting offices around the colleges. First off, they take on the chess freaks. Then they take on the gung-ho football heroes. Check. What college do they dig you out of, Norton? Notre Dame. Ever hear of it? Oh, yeah. So all the professors are hunchbacks, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Mate. Oh, 
ask Trevor to kiss it better for you. Shut it, Norton! <laughs> yeah, you go off and see Trevor, right? Yeah, okay, Spider. You're a shit, Norton! You reckon he heard something? The possibility doesn't seem to bother you very much, does it? What have I got to lose? I got a lot to lose, mister. Including your temper. So what do we do? Carry on with the game. To get the unit closed down. Damned imbeciles. All this will be scrubbed. All the good I'm done. Stupid! Can't they see? I mean, this is my home. Every law and order lunatic, every right-wing monster in the country, they've all tried. They're all still trying to close it down. I'm not. Like they say, it's an ongoing situation. You've got to learn to live with it. <laughs> I'm not talking about people outside. Well, that's something else, isn't it? You know, the older I get, the more persuaded I become that one's occupation increasingly conditions one's philosophy. I am now, my dear Shane Wentworth, a convinced disciple of Heraclitus. Oh, the bloke who jumped in the river, mm. sir. Mm. As you know, he taught that everything is in a constant state of flux. From instant to instant, from second to second, things are changing. Yeah, trying to go along with that, sir. The perfect philosophy for an activist. Since something is always happening, one should be prepared for the expected and the unexpected. It's like our friend Langton, sir. Quite. Right. Have we decided what to do about him? Well, I think that your suggestion for bringing the whole operation forward is an excellent one. Oh, thank you, sir. I also think that as an extra precaution, it will suddenly become time for Langton to have a psychiatric checkup. It's a great deal of fuss about nothing. A little visit to the doctor for you. A little trip into the outside world. I'll never get back. I'll have nothing to come back to. Now, don't be stupid. No! I'll have nothing to come back to. You're making a great deal of fuss about nothing. You're not doing anybody any favours behaving like this. Come on, son. Get your coat. Have you worked in Manchester before, Derek? Yeah. Nice place? Yeah. Can I ask you a personal question? Yeah. How did you get the nickname Derek? From a book. What kind of a book? Science fiction story. Strange little creatures living inside the earth. Horrible, cruel, brilliant, inhuman. The Darrows. Fascinating. Yeah. Know what Darrow stands for? Yeah, tell me. It stands for Detrimental Robot. Ah.
No milk. No bread. No butter, no sugar, no coffee. So you're a lousy housekeeper. So move out to the Hilton. Slob. Sitting around all day in your fat keister. Whatever you say. Well, Scott, please, the breakout's been brought forward to tomorrow. You kissed the hem of my garment. Yeah? Broke down and cried. I can just see it. What's wrong, fishwife? Bad day at the office. Langton freaked out. I'm sure he knows. Did he say anything? No, he didn't. But tomorrow means the end of what he told me was his home. Ah, uh, he's paranoid. Rubbish, he's right. You better believe it. That unit was set up practically over the governor's dead body. He watches it like a hawk. All he needs is an excuse to close it down. Mm-hmm. Well, you know what the man said. You can't make an omelette without breaking eggs. Yeah, and I know what the other man said. What did he say? Hmm? He said, where's the omelette? Come on, let's have you! Come on, Will! Uh, come on, wakey, wakey! Let's have you! Come on! <coughs> Get stuffed. The creation period starts at 11.15. Never varies by more than a couple of minutes. Langton calls that home. Yeah. How do people get institutionalized like that? Some spend 10 years in the Nick. Some spend 10 years at Eaton or Harrow. Let's have some breakfast. You're joking. And why stir your coffee before putting sugar in? Kibitzes I do not like. I think I got heart burn. It's all that coffee. You're sure they're aware of the new arrangements? Yeah. They're here. Ah. Do uh, police cars get around here? If they do, we'll tell them we're consenting now, don't. You forgot to check the goddamn petrol! Ugh. Still 
car on the way home. Got the oil kicked yeah. a lot. Well, it's empty now. Somebody siphoned it off. It happens a lot in this area. It's all I need. Mammy has a car going for No, no, no. Wait! Brotherhood of Bad and their latest hit single, that's called Angelo, 11.22 on Piccadilly, and now from the sounds of Angelo to the sounds of Queen and Loverboy. Good! you for, but I hope it's castration. Look at how he comes to fuss!
Hello? Yes. One moment, please. Maggie? What is it? A Mr. Scott is calling from Manchester. Will you pay for the call? Yes. Put the call through, please. Hello, Mr. Scott. Maggie will be here in one second. Spider, it has to be you, but how and why? Who was that that answered the phone? Old friend of mine. Friendship starts a bit early in the morning, doesn't it? Not really. I just didn't let him go home last night. Charming. Anybody I know? His name is Kurt Tallis, and he's a German journalist. Uh-huh. Clicks his heels, lights your cigarettes, opens the door for you, eh? Are they letting you make long-distance phone calls from that special unit of yours now, Spider? Spider? Are you still there? Who needs you, darling? But, sir. My dear woman, it is so simple. Scott is in deep, deep trouble. Well, damn it, man. Uh, shooting a prison officer is the same thing as killing a policeman. Almost the same, sir. Uh, he's no fool. He'll know the heat's on, and he'll know that wherever he is, the best thing for him to do is to stay put. Implacable logic, sir. He'll also know that nobody will want to know him except uh, Maggie Parsons. The mountain can't come to Mohammed. So Mohammed's got to come to the mountain. Uh, admirably put, Sergeant. Our line to Spider Scott is via Miss Parsons. The carriage awaits, madame. Oh, good. Oh, Kurt, look, you won't uh, forget to get my dress and the dry cleaners, will you? I shall regard that as a sacred trust. Oh, I like you, Kurt. <laughs> oh, my handbag. But not so much as you like this fellow called Spider. I don't grade my men like that. How do you grade them? I rate them all first among equals. Emotionally, that is like giving yourself a blank check. Well, men have been doing that for centuries. Maggie Parsons has just arrived at Euston Station. What do you want us to do, sir? Well, the plane leaves Heathrow Airport for Manchester in quarter of an hour. Quarter of an hour? Quarter of an hour? Take us quarter of an hour to find our way out of this building. Airport security, please. Oh, hello, Philip. Uh, Stuart here. I want the Manchester plane delayed for an hour and a quarter. Can do? Very good. I shall be at the Midland Hotel Manchester from 8 o'clock tonight. Pleasant flight, gentlemen. Hello, uh, Philip. I hear your boy got his blue. Give him my congratulations. Toodaloo. Uh, no, thank you. A bit too early for me. Your mate doesn't look too well. That's Billy. He's dead.
Died yesterday afternoon. Died with his boots off? Oh, no. I've got them. Oh, yeah. Waste not, what not, eh? Right. What's the drill about Billy? Well, I've been mustering me energies to go and call the police. It's a nuisance, cos I've got this little bit of business to see down Salford Way. Yeah, um, I'll look after the police for you. God bless you. Well, uh, I'll be on me way anyway. Uh, you skin friend? Yeah. You do me a favour? I do you one. You sure? Billy had five of them notes stuffed in his vest. Oh, yeah. What a way to go, eh? Yeah. Call the four you maker with a fiver in your vest on spent. I knew they were going to do it. I shouldn't have let them. No point in blaming yourself. And now Mr Trevor's dead. They'll close the unit for sure now. Oh, come on, Langton. I'm going to tell them I knew. Oh, do that. That's all they need. That puts you in the plot as well. End of special unit. Would you be sorry? What do you think? Hypocrite. You are damned hypocrite! <laughs> You knew! You knew! I heard you talking to Slater! Oh, Johnny! Oh, Johnny! Oh, Johnny! Oh, Johnny! Oh, Johnny! Oh, Johnny! The bands are out again! Do you know what I said? I said the bands are out again! Oh, Johnny! Oh, Johnny! This is a recorded message. Maggie Parsons is in Manchester on business. If you wish to leave a message... Good for you, Maggie. Lucy Marla. Who the hell are you? Police officers. With warrant cards? Of course. Yeah, all right. I believe you are what is called an art therapist in the special unit of the prison. I was. I just resigned. What happened to your neck, Miss Marla? Love bites. We'd like to ask you some questions about the three men. Two broke out of the special unit yesterday, William Scott and Charles Norden, and the other, Langton, who says you talked to Spider Scott about the breakout. Langton's a psychopath. I like that. 
Yes, I definitely like that. Yesterday he's a good boy getting fed candy, special unit set up for him. Today he's a bad boy, so he's a psychopath. My partner has strong views on these things. Nuts, you're just a team. Mr. Hot and Mr. Cold. You know the way out? About the breakout. There was a car crash. Very strange, wasn't it? I'd say weird. Baffling. Mystifying. Shall we tell her? Why not? When we got to the scene of the crash, Miss Marler, we found your friend Wiseman unconscious behind the wheel of the other car. The one with all the escape gear tucked inside. And now there's this statement Langton is making. You could be an accessory to murder, Miss Marler. Reliably informed, there's a large mug of coffee waiting for you in the kitchen, Constable. Plus a piece of birthday cake which regrettably arrived too late for one of the patients who died last night. Thank you, sir. Well, how are we today? David Wiseman. Great. Two broken legs and a plastic rib cage is all. We're engaged in a hazardous profession, David. Making candles and leather goods is hazardous? David. They're treating you all right here. Fine. No complaints about the food? None. I could arrange something more ethnic. Bagels, lox. Do you feel to fish? Huh. First it's a birthday cake for the fires, then it's bagels, lox, and go feel to fish, I know. You must be the man from the good food guide. <laughs> if any of my ex-wives heard you say that, they'd fall about laughing. They'd sign affidavits testifying I couldn't even boil an egg. However, I do flatter myself I might do a fair job cooking Miss Lucy Marler's goose. Hard luck, Lucy. She's in trouble. So am I. Agreed. The same trouble. Well, I'll be back to see you again, David. Oh, yeah? Are you sure there's nothing else I can do for you? Books? Magazines? No, thank you. Oh, uh, wait a minute. There is a book I've always wanted to read by, uh, by an American, Thomas Merton. What's it called? Elected Silence. I have the strangest feeling, David. You'll find it's out of print. husband and me bought this caravan for visitors, sir. House been small, you see. Yeah. We just let it out now and again. Door sometimes sticks a bit, sir. All right for you. Any fuel for the heater? I've got some for the house. I've got fetch you half a gallon. Yeah, all right. Manchester's a bigger place than I thought, sir. What did you expect? Two old biddies with spinning wheels sitting outside a thatched hut. What's upset you, sir? I'm upset because Fairfax is going to chew my ass off for losing Maggie Parsons. And we lost Maggie Parsons because that... You were kind to little children. Yeah. Never again, Derek. Never again, Willis. Hang on, I'm going to get some snow. All right. Uh, I have plenty of disperses, huh? No. Again. Right, I'll take a ball and chalk down there, right? Yeah. Hi, Maggie. So you got my message then? You are a clever girl. I believe you. Spider? You still there? 
Yeah, sorry. I think I've got fleas or something. I have heard you can train them to do tricks nowadays. Very funny. <laughs> Look, um, don't come to the hotel. Not until I'm due last. I am going to the Whitworth Gallery tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock. If you're interested, uh, just ask for Marilyn Monroe. I might just join you. What are you going to do tonight? Oh, well, I thought I might be picked up by an old queen and have him take me home. Spider. So you've come out of the closet at last. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> mm. I, I was probably out for only a couple of minutes, sir. When I came round, Darrow here was already out of the vehicle. As were Scott and Norden. Yes, indeed. Were you knocked out, Darrow? Yes, I was. What happened then? Well, we could hear the police cars buzzing around in the vicinity of the prison. And Darrow had this brilliant idea. Wiseman was still spark out, so we lifted him out and stuck him behind the wheel of our vehicle. So when the bobbies eventually arrived, there he was, apparently driving away from the scene of the breakout. And with all the escape clobber in the back. Very wise. Have any trouble with the police? Oh, they're all said to be a bit huffy, sir. And I flashed the magic document, and uh, they went all silent and sulky. Didn't like it a bit. But they were stopped, nonetheless. Uh, we'll probably have a squawk or two out of them. Par for the course. <laughs> As they say, a policeman's lot is not a happy one. All right, well, we'll get, get on time. Uh, let's take this service lift, eh? Right. All right, look. Yeah. There you go. Why have we stopped here, Sarge? I don't know. Um, is there a, a, a... What do you call it? A, a, a... Release button? Yeah, release button. Yeah. No, I don't think there is. Nor a... Uh... There's not a telephone, either. No dog and bone. Mm. Tell you what, Sarge. What's that? I think the lift's jammed. Can you do something? It's all right, madam. Uh, we are police officers. I should be on for my tea now. Do something, Willis. Bloody hell, why is it always me? Hello? Hi! Help! Anybody there? Down. Oh, Jesus Christ. <sighs> Laurel and Hardy are late, aren't they? Half an hour overdue. Probably having trouble with the language. Did you get anything out of Wiseman, sir? I wasn't concerned to. I was more interested in uh, creating a little alarm and despondency. You still think he's Mossad? I'm sure of it. Israeli intelligence must have a pretty abysmal opinion of us if they send their third eleven to play against us. That, my dear Shane Wentworth, is an unwarranted conclusion. You can hardly say that Wiseman distinguished himself yesterday, can you, sir? I agree. But I find that of consummate interest. So do I. Were you thinking along the same lines, Darrow? I'm thinking Mossad doesn't recruit idiots. Exactly. And I'm beginning to wonder if we're the only ones that wanted to spring Norden. I don't fix for the past two years. You know what tradesmen are like, they say they'll come and, and they never show up. Brought your paraffin, half a gallon. It's all right, you can pay me tomorrow. Fine. Well, need anything else? Just let me know. Thanks. Can I ask you a personal question? What is it? Are you Irish? How did you guess? Well, my late husband came from County Kerry. I'm from the Black North. Oh. Well, you know, if there's anything you want. Yeah, thanks again.
quiet. Now, when we get in there, you keep quiet. Right. Let me do all the talking and not a word about being stuck in the lift. All right. All right. All right. I was expecting you an hour and 20 minutes ago, uh, roughly about 8 o'clock. Well, you didn't exactly say 8, sir. Shut up. You look rather put out, sir. Well, we were here at 8 o'clock, sir, uh, right on the dot. Really? We yeah. got jammed in the lift with an hysterical old bird. <laughs> jammed in the lift for an hour and 20 minutes? How very upsetting. It was, sir. Uh, how come both of you were jammed in the lift? Shouldn't one of you have been keeping an eye on Maggie Parsons? Well, uh, that's uh, another thing, sir, that we... Uh... Yes, Sergeant? Well, we... We lost her, sir. Lost her? Yes, at the railway station. This there. afternoon. That means Maggie Parsons is now as free and unsupervised as a bird. But it wasn't exactly our fault, sir. You see, the reasons kick... I will listen to, Sergeant. Excuses? Never. Yes. Well, you'll just have to find her, won't you, Sergeant? Yes, well, where do we start, sir? Oh, let me see now. She deals in antiques, don't she? Yes. And in that capacity, travels around a great deal. Mm -hmm. Well, the hotel used in this city by visiting antique dealers is known, by no coincidence at all, as the Chippendale. Right. Kurt, what are you doing here? I came all the way from London to tell you that the dry cleaners have lost your dress. <laughs> you are a fool. And to tell you you are under surveillance by the police. What, here? Yes, here. It is self-service, this place? Hmm? Oh, the barman keeps going off having long telephone conversations with his grandma in Tibet. Then we must take advantage of his absence. <laughs> the police were waiting for you when you came off the train. How do you know that? I saw them. How did you get here, anyway? On the same train as you. Why? Is jealousy a good reason? What happened at the station? Ah, there was a ludicrous scene. I think they lost you then. If, if I did not, I would not be talking to you now. Hmm. They'll find me then. You have signed your correct name in the hotel register. Mm. Then they will find you. I am about to make a monstrous suggestion. I've had lots of those. This could be more original. Oh. What would you like to drink? I'll have a double scotch, please. Double scotch. Period. Right. <laughs> About that suggestion. <laughs> Come. Allow me to be the go-between for you and this man, Spider. <laughs> You're joking. I'm being logical. The police will follow you. Me, they do not know. Oh, your mum's good. It is a good school. Genius. Mm. I, too, am a resident here. Ah, oh, you know. In room 128. 128. <laughs> Thank you. By day, God help me. I should be as friendly as I would be to any other guest. And by night? I should be as communicative as required. In What is the number of your room? 206. Mm. I have a good head for figures. Why are you prepared to do this, Kurt? To prove the Deutsche Mark is stronger than the pound. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't wait to see your first meeting with Spider. It should be interesting. Mm. Well, it's tomorrow at the Whitworth Gallery, next to Marilyn Monroe. Does not surprise me. You have an expression, home from home. <laughs> oh, yeah, lovely fella. I shall tiptoe along to room 206 later on to be briefed. I shall be sitting up in bed, wearing <laughs> nothing to speak of. 